Welcome to Britain. Home to teachers' pet journalists, the royal family, and an extraordinary number of bigots. And at least two of those things are always in that building behind me. Yesterday was International Women's Day. The British tabloid press and wider establishment chose to celebrate the occasion by attacking self-confessed woman Meghan Markle. Her crime? Having a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. Meghan appeared in front of a camera and said, this is what happened to me. It will be of little surprise to about half of the world's population that a woman's simple statement of experience was met with a tsunami of incredulity, derision and uproar. And if you doubt Meghan's version of events, well, fair enough. But I'd encourage you to cast your eyes over today's front pages. Let's start with Good Morning Britain. The pigeon is a metaphor for Piers Morgan. It's not a tabloid newspaper, but it does use the same form. In fact, its viewership is larger than most of the newspapers put together. Piers Morgan responded to the interview by initially suggesting that Harry and Meghan were accusing the entire British royal family of white supremacy. This is untrue. Although I wouldn't be surprised that a group of people who believe in hereditary supremacy are fans of a different kind of supremacy as well. The most horrifying moment of many in GMB's programming, however, was when Piers laughed Meghan's suicidal feelings out of the studio. What did they say to you? I'm sorry, I don't believe a word she says. If somebody tells you that they've thought about killing themselves, the appropriate response is not skepticism. It's empathy, respect, support. Megan's not going to see you doubting the validity of her mental health or suicidal thoughts, but your mates who've had them are. It comes down to a simple choice between two options, and I would opt for don't be a be someone's friend. Thankfully, Good Morning Britain's Alex Beresford took Piers to task for his comments this morning, and Piers walked off the set. Okay, I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry, no. Oh, uh, Sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can track him, maybe not mine. No, 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 no. See you later. I'm being. Sorry. What's the word that he'd used to describe that? Snowflake. Moving on, hate rag the Daily Mail screams. What have they done? Well, they've spoken out about racism, something which your newspaper perpetuates. Do you remember comparing refugees to rats or characterising them as a £1 billion drain on the NHS? Oh, but what about that Stephen Lawrence front page? Well done, lads. You could also look at addressing the fact that 64% of the black people pictured in your newspaper are criminals, which is in no way representative of the broader population, but does conform to the Daily Mail reader's worldview. The Telegraph contrasts Harry and Meghan's loyalty to the Crown with that of King Edward and Wallace Simpson, who apparently exemplified duty. If you don't know who those people are, they were Nazi sympathisers, and the Third Reich planned to install them as puppet monarchs if they conquered Great Britain. Anything else? No, I think that's it. The Mirror reports on the worst royal crisis since Edward abdicated. Andrew, Andrew, literally friends with a sex trafficking paedophile. I forgot that Emily Maitland's interview was 85 years ago. Wow, time really does fly in lockdown. You're right, Daily Express. It is so sad it's come to this. It's so sad that two people felt they didn't have a choice between leaving their country and disavowing their own family or dying by suicide. It's so sad that your newspaper contributed to it. For reference, here's how you reported that both Meghan and Kate Middleton enjoy an avocado. Can you spot the difference? The Society of Editors, which represents the heads of British press, came out with a statement after the interview. They said there was no evidence of racism in British newspapers. Let's just check the board of the Society of Editors. You have got to be fucking kidding me. 